Are we ready for the prelude now? Welcome to Green Lake Church worship service via Zoom and YouTube. Really glad you can join us. We'll begin our service with a prelude performed by our Minister of Music, Wanda Griffith. Again, welcome to Green Lake Church worship service. We're delighted that you can join us via the means of electronics. Um, it's sure not as good as being together in person, but it's way better than not connecting and being all by our lonesomes. So welcome. We're delighted that you can join us via YouTube or via Zoom. And uh, you know what? This week, if you get a chance, would you send an email to the church office and uh, let us know that you are watching. Let us know the quality as it comes through to you. Uh, the more feedback we get, it helps us on the production end. And more than that, we'd just love to hear from you. It's, it's great to know you're there. So I'm gonna take a look at my announcement list so I don't forget things. Yes, first, I wanna talk about Sabbath school classes. We have a number of Sabbath school classes that meet for both uh, children, young people, and adults. And uh, we, uh, Today, I jumped in on three of the Sabbath school classes. I connected with Elise Lambeth's Sabbath school class for the little kids. That was a lot of fun to see all their faces spread around the screen uh, in the gallery view. And uh, some of them had done a special project. Elise was recruiting more for next week and they were all excited going, me, I will do one, I'll do a project, I'll do a song. It was a lot of fun. Thanks Elise for all that you do. And, for parents for helping kids connect. I checked in on the library class. Since I'm sitting here in the church library, I thought it was appropriate that I check in on the library class who are meeting via Zoom. Um, Asa Takamori was uh, presenting the content of a book that sounded really fascinating, and I have to add it to my stack of books to read. Thank you, Shine May, for helping put that together. Uh, let's see, I also checked in on the fireside class. Looked like they were having a good time. 
And then uh, I think Hans may have uh, checked on uh, some classes with some teachers during the week. Hans, if you're ready, let me turn it over to you to tell us what you found out when you uh, called somebody about Sabbath school this week. Hi, good morning, happy Sabbath. Yes, John, I think we checked on in on two classes at the same time, because I also checked in on Shai May's class. Uh, yeah, it was um, doing book reviews, which is also a great thing. Um, I checked on Matt's class and he was telling me how they have conference calls due to the fact that some of the uh, people in that class don't have computers. And I think that's the, the same situation with Shai May's class as well. So they can't get online to, I guess, join these classes. So, but Matt found a way to just have a conference call, which is pretty cool. And of course my class, um, the youth class is doing well. I gave them an assignment and then we'll be talking about this assignment next Sabbath. So those are all the classes that I have checked upon. So yeah, back to you, John. Thanks Hans. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, let's see. Let me look over at my board again. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, another thing that Hans and I are going to share together. We, since we're all so far flung, we thought, how can we add a little personal touch? So we came up with the idea of doing birthdays. So Hans and I are going to wish you a happy birthday. If you have had a birthday during the month of May up through next Friday. And from here on, we're going to try to stay up to date. Uh, Carolyn Lacey has given me a list. Now, if you're not on Carolyn's list and you would like us to say happy birthday, let us know. Or maybe you know somebody that should be greeted and said happy birthday too, but might not be on our list. You can let us know that too. Well, let me lean over here and grab my list. Is it over there? Let's see, where did I put Here it is, I've got it. I've got my list. So. On my list, Stephanie Mays, her Sabbath school class saying happy birthday to her at the beginning of the month when her birthday was. And all the way over in Spain, Ellen Park, happy birthday. Uh, we are so excited to wish you happy birthday. Roger Ferris, Dr. Ferris, happy birthday to you. Uh, Paul McGale, Paul, I wish I could see you. I know you wish you could see me too. Happy birthday, Paul. Uh, Mitch Webster, happy birthday. Lila Newman, happy birthday, Lila. Uh, Jamie Lund, oh, Jamie, with the voice from heaven. Thank you, Jamie, for singing for us on occasion, and happy birthday to you. And then Gary Morrell, all the way down there in God's country where the sun shines all the time. Gary, happy birthday. Now, Hans, you have some on your list. I'll turn it back to you. I do, I do. There's a lot of birthdays. Um, I would like to personally say happy birthday to Kyle um, Ellis. Also, Gray, um, Grayson Steinman is, 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 it was his birthday as well. Carl and Alvin V. Meister's father and son birthday. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Kirk Rule, happy birthday as well. One of my youth class, Francisco Lopez Jr. Happy birthday, I hope he had a great one this past week. And lastly, Mark um, Rom Ramos, yeah. A happy birthday to you as well. So hopefully everyone have a great birthday. Everyone had a special birthday, even though we are on lockdown. So happy birthday, everyone. All right, that's Mark Ramirez. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. All right, well, happy birthday to all. Now, another couple of special notes today. We have a children's story all the way from Chile. Daisy Benchera is doing our children's story today. And our special music today is brought to us by Sophia and Isaac Negretti from New Zealand. That is so exciting. We miss you guys, uh, but thank you for being present via electronics. And Next week was originally scheduled to be an international Sabbath. And when we were looking at happy birthday to Ellen in Spain and uh, children's story from Chile and special music from New Zealand, we were going, well, actually we just got international Sabbath in a week early. Uh, so thanks to all 
in the far-flung parts of the world who have joined the Green Lake Worship Service today. One other note, sort of along that same line, today, May 16, was supposed to be the choir festival. Um, and our the, the sermon today is titled Songs in the Night. And I'll talk a little bit about music and the life of a Christian. I know for our choir members, this lockdown is a, a just a terrible loss, uh, that opportunity for connection socially. But there's something magic when you sing together in a choir. And uh, they do connect on a Friday night Zoom meeting. But it's not like being together to sing. So choir members, thank you for your faithfulness through the years. and hanging in there with us uh, through this very difficult time. Let's see, I think that is it for our announcements. And so if I look at my bulletin, it is now time for our uh, morning hymn of praise, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Let's sing together in our isolated places. It's time for the invocation. I invite you to join me in prayer. Creator of earth and sky and sea, thank you for calling us together this morning, even as we are scattered physically and joined together in worship. We thank you for calling us together and receiving us with your smile and for teaching us to send smiles to one another. Lord of the seasons, we pray that you will cause this season of epidemic to pass quickly from the earth. Lord of the nations, we pray that you will hasten the day when swords are beaten into plowshares and spears are transformed into pruning hooks and justice rolls down like the great river. Lord of our hearts, we pray that you will work in us and through us. Make us partners with you, agents of the kingdom of heaven in the week to come to accomplish justice and peace. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And now Marlene Land will call for the morning offering.
It's time for the offering call. And if we were in church, we'd all be reaching for our purses and our wallets and filling out our envelopes and getting ready for the deacons to come down the aisle with the offering plates. But we're not, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Take a moment to make a reminder for yourself to do something later. And the something that you're going to do later is to give your offering because quite frankly, it seems unlikely that you're going to leave one screen and go to another screen and do it in the middle of the church service. Now, if you've got a paper and pencil handy, just write offering and leave it on your desk. But if not, then look around and find something to do that will remind you to take action later. Maybe put something that's near you on the floor or move something to an unusual place, which is what I'm going to do right now with this vase of flowers. There, I put it on the edge of the table, which is not where it usually goes. The offering today is for local church ministries, which is basically the church budget. Now, since we haven't actually been in the church facility lately, and there hasn't actually been an offering plate passed to us, the church's income has unfortunately fallen off, and we're short of our budgeted goals. You all know how to give online by now. You just go to the church's website at www.greenlakesda.org and click Give in the upper toolbar. Then follow the prompts for the next steps. Well, now that you've got your reminder in place, when the service is over today and you go to leave your device, you'll see it and think, what is that there for? And you'll remember, oh, I should stay logged on and give my offering. You know, even though we can't be together, the church still needs our support. So please be generous. Let's pray. Lord, we realize that we are returning only a small portion of what you have given us. Please take our offerings today and multiply them to your good. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, happy Sabbath. So for children's story, I wanted to introduce you to our new family member, Russell. Russell came to us about a year ago. He was um, one of the many dogs on the street that are in Chile. He was in a really bad state. His eyes were all gooey and red and um, his bones were all sticking out. He was super skinny and you could tell he wasn't doing very well. He was a puppy, but he actually looked like, like an old man. So when we decided to keep him um, that same day, we decided to take him to the vet. And there's a vet by our house that, that's about a mile away. So we decided to put a collar and a leash on him and walk him to the vet. But he, since he wasn't used to humans, he didn't understand what the collar or the leash were four, so he was very scared of it. So he refused to walk with us. So we had to carry him like a little baby the whole way, um, especially my brother, he did most of the carrying. And um, he had to take a bunch of meds. He had to take, I had to wake him up in the middle of the night to give him eye medication, which wasn't very fun for him. I had to give him a bath. And he didn't like it because he doesn't like water very much, but 
he always led us and he's such a kind dog and it really reminded me of when I was a child because when we're kids sometimes we have to do stuff that we don't like or things happen in the world that we don't understand or that seem really bad and um, I found that when you worry a lot or you're anxious or afraid it doesn't really help the situation at all I found that it's better to trust in God because he loves us so much and he's always watching out for us and I know right now um, times are hard and it can be hard to understand what's going on I think it's important that we trust God and remember that he loves us very much Dear Lord and Father, we come to you today with the utmost praise and thanks for all your blessings. We can't begin to know how magnificent you are, and we are truly grateful for all that you bestow. Lord, we don't need to tell you what trying times we are going through and how challenging life is for so many of us. It is so difficult to remain hopeful when everything around us has either been put on hold or turned completely upside down. We don't know the extent of what's happening. We don't have the answers and we definitely don't see when they are coming. It is so easy to be depressed and disheartened, but Lord, please forgive us our weaknesses and shortcomings and help us keep our eyes on you. You can give us courage. You've shown us that regardless of what may happen, human life can be lived victoriously if we choose to trust you. Please help us turn to you and realize that you are ultimately in control. Lord, we're praying especially today for Ethan Ibsen, Jennifer Cummings, Becky Meacham, Nola Jean Banbury, Ed and Elma Gonzaga, Rhonda Casper Ford, and the GLC childcare and preschool workers. Please be close to them and help them feel your presence in their lives. You also know the longings that are in each of our hearts. Please help us recognize your leading when we face our own challenges. Now, Lord, we thank you so much for your coming to earth for us. With our ever-present hope in your soon return, we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. The Old Testament reading is Psalm 42, 1 through 8. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me and through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life.
The New Testament reading is from Colossians 3, 16 through 17. Let the message about Christ's knowledge, richness, fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Thank you, Quinn, and uh, Sophia, and Isaac, and Daisy, and Jen, and Marlene, uh, Wanda for helping put the service together. Really appreciate it. Wednesday night, I got to go camping. Uh, I was up in the South Cascades, and I didn't get my tent set up until after dark. I got my tent set up, I crawled into my sleeping bag, and it was raining. And there's something quite magic about the patter of rain on a tent, as long as you're dry inside, which I was. And then later in the night, uh, I was charmed by the hooting of an owl. Uh, I don't know what kind of owl it was. It's not an owl I'm used to hearing, but an owl was calling somewhere in the woods. But the truth is, I did not hear very much of either song, not the rain patter song or the owl song because my bed was comfortable, I was warm, and I had been hiking that day and was tired, so I went to sleep and slept all night long and woke up to a little bit of rain patter in the morning. But there are songs in the night. I like to go camping in part so I can hear the night songs. Sometimes there's frog songs. Um, what I really prefer is to be in a place where there is not the song of automobiles and sirens and it was a wonderful occasion. But I remember other nights camping that were not quite so idyllic. I remember once in college, I went backpacking for a weekend with a couple of other guys. I had a sleeping bag that I'd bought from somebody. It was a down sleeping bag. So I thought, oh, this is good for any weather. We hiked up into the mountains and that first night I nearly froze. This sleeping bag was completely, utterly inadequate. So I spent the whole night trying, uh, keeping the fire going, which kept me awake to put the wood in the fire. And then when I would try to sleep, I would lie as close to the fire as I thought I dared. And then I would worry about catching my sleeping bag on fire. It was a miserable night. I was never so glad for morning as I was that night. Um, I needed a really bright song that night. I don't remember any songs. I just remember the misery. When you've got a bad night, it's good to have a song. I don't know, a year or two ago, I got the flu. It was not the worst case of flu ever, but it incapacitated me for several days and I was in bed with nothing to do but lie in bed. But Dana Waters had told me about a book. I think I've mentioned it before. Uh, that she had enjoyed. And so I had this book uh, as an audio book. I was, I didn't feel good enough to actually open my eyes and read, but I could listen to this book. And the book was this wonderful tale about a man who was carrying an impossibly heavy grief. The grief was so heavy. He was so despairing that he was planning to commit suicide. And then every time he would actually plan to do the deed, somebody would need his help, some neighbor, somebody would desperately need his help. So he'd have to put his plans on hold and go to the rescue of somebody. And by the time the, you know, the book goes through, he, you know, he redeems himself through saving others. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful tale. And to me, that's a picture of a song in the night. Yep, I was confined to my bed. It was a long, dreary few days in bed. But the song created by that book, by that wonderful story, lifted my spirits and I was almost thinking, man, I could get the flu again if I had a book this good to enjoy and I didn't get any, uh, my symptoms were not any worse. It was wonderful. Which brings us to the Old Testament reading we have for today uh, from Psalm 42. And I'm, I'm going to read some of it and then we'll talk our way through this song. Psalm 42 begins, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. 
Now that first part, those first phrases, they don't alert you to any problem. You could think, well, it's natural for humans to long for God in every healthy relationship. Friends long for each other. Lovers long for each other. The longing is not a sign of distress. It's natural. But in this case, the poet is thinking of a, a, a longing that is driven by, by pain, by trouble. As a deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O oh God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where can I go and stand before him? And then this, day and night. I have only tears for my food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, where is this God of yours? So the poet is in big trouble. People see that he is in trouble. They know that he is some, a, a man of faith. Perhaps he has spoken of his faith. And others watching are going, oh, yeah? <laughs> What's it doing for you lately? Now, where is this God you speak about? Your life's a mess. You're in trouble. We can see you're miserable. And he's going, yeah, I am miserable. Where are you, God? Where are you? It was a long night. And of course, in this case, we're speaking of night as a metaphor. It's not just a, a physical night, a few hours of darkness, but it is a time of, of misery and, and difficulty. Uh, you know, I'm, that's where we are right now in our society, you know, across America, across the world. You know, here uh, we, we've been watching the news about, uh, I, I don't know exactly how to say his name, Ahmad Arbery. You know, how is it that in our country, the country that you and I are part of, two white guys think they could go out with guns to capture a black guy. And when he resists being captured, they kill him. And we're going, that's our country? How could such a thing happen in our country? But it did, and it does. And we are haunted with a question, how can we make this better? How can we stop this kind of outrage? And we, we must do what we can to do it. But feeling our own helplessness in the face of this kind of outrage, we go, God, where are you? you know, when, when can you show up and do something about it? then our hearts are, are heavy. Um, you know, the unemployment figures right now, scary. And think if you're a millennial, maybe some of you have been paying attention over the recent, you know, the last few years, while the economy was booming already, it was really difficult for millennials to, to get going with their lives in the same way that many of us who are older did back, you know, 30, 40 years ago. The jobs were not there. They didn't pay as well. And many of the millennials have a weight of student debt that just crushes the imagination and crushes the heart. And now we're looking at unemployment figures greater than the Great Depression. It's a scary place to live right now. It's scary if you're young. It's scary if you're old and you care about those who are young. It's a terrifying world. We are in a dark night right now and we need a song yeah we do we need a song to carry us through the night um those of us who are older you know we're afraid of infection you know the COVID-19 I was just looking at the numbers I think this morning or yesterday morning um about the percentages of people who die from it and uh guess what I'm a prime target <laughs> And so when I go in the grocery store, I'm trying to hide away from everybody. I'm trying to stay away from everybody. And many of you who are older are too. We are used to having remedies for the diseases around us. And here's one that we don't have a remedy for. It's beyond our power. We're afraid. Appropriately afraid. And we should be. We turn our eyes toward God and go, how long, oh Lord, when are you going to intervene? And then there's this social distancing stuff. I hate it. You know, I want to shake hands. I want to hug people. We can't even do fist bumps. It's terrible. Um, we're, we're surviving it, but it's difficult. It's a hard time. Which brings us then to the next verses in Psalm 42. 
which connect exactly with our situation. Here we are. The poet says, my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Choir members, this is for you. you know, this man was a worship leader. This poet was a worship leader. And he remembered being part of grand, magnificent musical experience that was together. Have you ever been in a huge crowd of people singing together? I, I remember millions of years ago when I was a college freshman in the first Friday night at Southern Missionary College, it was called then, Southern Adventist University, being in the, the church with, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 other students, and they sang um, a great hymn from the hymnal. And I just remember sitting there, singing my heart out, and at the same time being lifted to heaven by this music we shared together. And now we're on lockdown, and we're connecting with each other via electronics, which is pretty thin soup. Better than nothing. But, oh, we hunger for those days we remember when we could be in church together. We remember Christmas concerts with a packed house and an orchestra and choirs and carols sung together. So no wonder the poet is down and no wonder we struggle because we remember when things were better. We remember when we could be together. Then the psalmist goes on to say this. <clears throat> Why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? And I'm laughing going, well, duh, I know why you're so discouraged. I know why you're so sad. But he's talking to himself. He's trying to talk himself up. Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged. But God, I will remember you. And when he remembered God, it gave him strength to get through the night. He gave him a song in the night. As Job puts it uh, in the book of Job, there's a reference to God giving songs in the night. And God does, when we remember God, remember his power and his promises. Um, one of the good things is night is not the last word. Dawn comes every morning. Today, well, in my, at the park above our house here in Magnolia, where I go for meditation, um, last week a young man met up with me uh, quite by uh, accident as far as we were concerned. Um, and he asked about what I was doing. I described my meditation practice and he goes, you yeah, know, I would, I'd like to do that sometime. Could I come and, you know, do this thing with you? And I said, sure. So today he and I were up there at five o'clock. And it's a good thing we're there at five o'clock. Sunrise was supposed to be at 5.30. At five, there was a bright orange glow in the Eastern horizon at 5.15, it was even brighter. And at about 5.20, it was just really brilliant. And then the clouds began to move in. And by 5.40, when the sun should have actually come up above the mountains, the clouds closed it. Yeah. We had a good conversation. We went our way. Um, but we were delighted because the sun had risen. You know, outside right now, it's pretty gloomy here. But I'm, I'm walking through today remembering the sun rose this morning. I saw the glorious light. Night is not the final word. That's our conviction as Christians because God has promised a brighter future. Some years ago, uh, I think it was in Ohio, I first heard a song by Don Moen titled, God Will Make a Way. And the words have lived with me. I've, I've said them to myself many a time when I have felt perplexed, when I felt stuck. Let me share some of the words with you. Oh, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for he will be my guide, hold me closely to his side. 
with love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. He will make a way. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Right now, when we look around us, the world's pretty scary. It's perplexing. What are the answers? What are wise policies? What are the facts? Lots of voices, lots of people shouting, even people waving guns around. They are so desperate. But we, as believers, come back to our confidence in this. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. This is one of our songs in the night, a song that will take us through the night. We can hang on to in the dark time as we wait for the brighter time. I love the words of our closing hymn that, that Wanda chose for us. Oh God, our help in ages past. What a great hymn. Listen to these words. Oh God, our help in ages past. Our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. If we take those words deep inside, this is a song that take us, can take us through many a dark night. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Let these words live in your heart. Memorize them. Sing them to yourself this week. It'll do your soul good. So I was thinking about songs in the night. A few passages of scripture ran through my mind, passages that it's always good to come back to. The Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. Sometimes you got to be kind of bold when you say that because it seems like we are lacking. But our certainty is in God. The Lord is our shepherd. We will lack nothing. Or this one from Philippians 4.19, the King James says, this is the Apostle Paul writing. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Those are the words that I learned as a kid. A modern translation puts it this way. It's the same idea. The same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Jesus Christ. These are words that can be a song in the night. The same God who takes care of me will supply your needs. And we say this to one another. Then finally, I want to leave you with the words of our uh, New Testament reading. Now, I want to underline the words that we give attention to shape our soul. We can choose where we place our attention. But once we've placed our attention, we cannot help but being shaped by what we give our attention to. If we give all of our attention to the news, whether that is from standard media or from social media, however we access information about the world, if we give all of our attention to the news, we're gonna be filled with despair and fear because that's what fills the news. That's what makes news. So along with giving attention to what's out there in the world, and there's a place for paying some attention there, let's make sure that we nourish our souls, that we cultivate our spiritual life by giving attention to words that build us up, that encourage us, that give us hope and confidence, that become songs in the night. Listen to this from our New Testament reading that uh, Quinn read for us earlier. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Think about those words. This is to be the shape of our character. We're to be tenderhearted mercy, 
kind uh, we're, we're to to wrap ourselves in tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. If we do this, we will be remarkable in today's culture. Right now, the public culture anyway, is giving to a lot of screaming, a lot of shouting, a lot of anger, and a lot of fear. As we participate in civic discourse, let's make sure that first, we have wrapped ourselves in tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And then let us speak into the world out of that good place. The apostle goes on, make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Don't escalate, de-escalate conflict. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts for as members of one body you are called to live in peace and always be thankful let the message about christ in all its richness fill your lives teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to god with thankful hearts just a couple of minutes ago uh, my wife karen who is sitting here with me she was mentioning a conversation with one of the choir members. The choir member was mentioning that she missed singing so much. And, and there is no way that, I know of no way to replace fully the richness of singing together. But I will encourage you, sing. You know, put your favorite music on your device, whatever kind of device you have that can fill your house with music, and sing along. Don't quit singing. We are separated physically, but let's unite our hearts in singing songs through this night so that our voices will be um, trained and ready for the day when we can again sing together and for that great day in heaven when, of course, our whole life will be full of song singing, holy, 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 and worthy is the Lamb. We can hardly wait for that day. And now let's sing together our closing hymn, O oh God, our help in ages past.
Let's pray together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Green Lake Church today via electronics. I hope you'll join us again next week. And don't hesitate to give the church office a call or me a call if there's any way that we can help you. The Lord bless you and give you a wonderful week.
safe and healthy. We send you love from Chile. We miss you guys. You are in our hearts and prayers. 